What's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna be going over the best ways to use wordplay. And just so you know, we have like basically five things that we're gonna be going over in this video. First is general app overview. So which modes within wordplay work best for what you're doing. And then we're gonna be going into keyword research and generating topic ideas. And we'll be going over some free ways to do that. And then also how you can use hrefs to generate topic ideas as well. Next, we'll go into subsection heading ideas. One of the most powerful ways to use wordplay is to give it the article title and then also the subsection headings. Um, that's usually the best way to get the best output. And so I'll show you how to get uh, those heading ideas. And then I'll show you a live example of how we're using AI content at CallScaler, give you kind of exactly how we do it with our template and then um, kind of related will be interesting ways that you can use AI content for your site. Doesn't always have to just be a straight up blog article. So first off, let's go into the app overview. So this is WordPlay. Um, I'm in the create content area on a demo account here, um, but you'll see there's three different ways to do this. You're going to, if you're signing up and you're watching this, you know, a few months after, I think we're going to change how this looks, but it'll generally be the same idea. Um, we have article title, so you can give the title and then some sections here. So these, think of these as like your H1 and then H2s down here, and you could put up to 12 different subsection headings. Now, something to keep in mind and something that we've gotten a lot of support requests for is including keywords into these articles. And one thing that you can do right now, we'll probably have a way where you can just like paste in some keywords and make sure that they're hit. But one thing you can do right now is with this sections area, is um, put in specific sections or topics that you know are needed to be covered uh, for it to rank on Google, basically. So if you have specific keywords, make sure to just include them in the sec article section. So for example, if we're talking about auto insurance, what are some of the top auto insurance providers? You'll probably like have to make sure that Geico is in there, you know, Traveler's Insurance, or some of the bigger players in the auto insurance space, you're gonna need to mention them in order to rank on Google. It's just kind of the way that uh, the Google algorithm works. And later in this video, I'll show you more ideas on how to get those subsection headings. Uh, but just to keep in mind, like if you have some keywords that you know you need to hit, make sure to put them in the section heading. Now, bulk creation mode is almost the exact same thing as this, but you're uploading a CSV of your article titles and all of the section headings um, and creating basically like a bulk amount of articles with the section headings already. And then lastly is AI mode. This is where all you give is the article titles and then we'll do everything else for you. This is much better for like broad topics that can be answered in a multitude of different ways. So if you have a really, really niche thing, you'll probably be better off going off with this um, article article title and, and including the sections that you want to cover. Um, but if you have like a pretty broad thing that can just like be answered in a lot of different ways, I think that's the best way to put it. Uh, that's when AI mode will really be handy. And generally with AI mode, you want to be a little bit more descriptive in your article title. So what are the top benefits of hiring an electrician for your home? That's a much better input to give to wordplay rather than just giving like the keyword electrician because the wordplay is not going to know what to do with just like electrician or you know two or three words so you really want to make the full article title here another way to think about this too is when you're writing these titles you want to give the ai a lot of room to like come up with ideas so for example if you give the ai mode are almonds healthy for you that's not gonna be as good of an article title as saying something like, what are the health benefits of almonds? Because the first question you can answer basically like, yes, almonds are healthy for you. Here's like a little bit of why, but what are the health benefits of almonds? You can kind of list out, you can imagine the AI thinking through, okay, I'm gonna list out all of the health benefits in different subsection headings, if that makes sense. So uh, just something to think about there, like keep it more open-ended if you're going to use this AI mode. All right, so that kind of covers the app overview. And next we're gonna go over to keyword research and topic ideas, how to do this for free and with hrefs. So let's first talk about the free way to do this. And the best way is just honestly on Google itself, you're gonna get these people also ask questions. And if we stay in this same um, vertical of auto insurance, you can get some ideas by just clicking through 
Uh, maybe maybe you'd want to, this seems like a decent one, just credit score affect auto insurance. So we're just going to open up a little notepad and copy and paste some of our favorite ideas here. You probably want like the more broad things. Um, generally for AI articles, it's going to be better if it's more broad. All right, so I spent a couple minutes doing that and here got like four ideas from that. Another interesting way you can get ideas is use this asterisk. So you can um, start to get a lot of ideas by typing in like what, asterisk, what, or like auto insurance. Um, and you can use this asterisk anywhere and it's going to basically give Google the idea, okay, I want you to fill in what is between here. So you could probably cover all of these. Like these are all actually really good ideas. Um, or maybe like the difference. Yeah. And the nice thing about this, like these autocomplete questions is that these autocomplete questions are showing up for other people. So it might show on Ahrefs or whatever, like keyword tool you're looking at that it gets zero search volume, but Ahrefs isn't always right on that type of stuff. So you can still cover these, especially with how easy it is to do with AI. Um, and yeah, start getting traffic for them, even if it says zero search volume. I think those are sometimes the better keywords to go after because no one thinks to go after them because it says zero search volume in Ahrefs. But I, I digress. The other free way to do this would be use a tool like Answer the Public. You could type in auto insurance. And what this will do is basically give you like a vis visualization. I actually like the data option a little bit better. Um, dude, yeah, there's like a ton of different topics you can cover in auto insurance. But yeah, this will give you a bunch of different ideas as well. Now, the way you'd want to do this with Ahrefs is, I mean, there's a million different ways you can do it, but one of the most simple ways, is just go into Keyword Explorer Auto Insurance. Uh, it's actually a pretty difficult keyword, so you're going to be running into a lot of things here. Uh, you could view all the questions. These are usually pretty good article topics. And then just go through here, um, look at the keyword difficulty. Basically, the lower the keyword difficulty is, the easier it is to rank. So you could set some filters here, max of like, depending on how powerful your website is, maybe do max of 20. This is a pretty difficult niche to write about. You're going to have a lot of competition. So I took a moment to like look over this. A lot of them is about canceling. You might want to exclude cancel here. This might give you a little bit better, show results. So yeah, something like this might want to cover. This would probably be better in single article mode. It seems like a more difficult one for the AI mode to handle. So this one might be interesting. Why did my auto insurance go up? Yeah, so generally you can do this and then um, export to CSV right here. And generally the, the interesting part about using Ahrefs is you can kind of filter out what all the noise is going to be there. Or also filter out like what you're probably not going to rank for. So filtering for keyword difficulty, excluding different words, um, stuff like that is, is pretty helpful in Ahrefs. Now, one of the more interesting things here too, is once you find like a article idea, like for example, why did my car insurance go up $100? It's really, really specific. And if you scroll down on this, you can kind of see, okay, there's some lower DR sites here that are ranking. And for example, you found I found effective coverage. It's only DR42, which generally like that's actually a decent domain rating, but in this insurance industry, that's pretty low. Like if you see all the other ones, it's 80, pretty much 80 or 90 plus. So you could look up effective in coverage. You could take this, take this, go to Site Explorer, type in their URL here. And you can start looking, you know, top pages, see what they're ranking for. And since they're a lower DR site, you may be able to rank for some of this stuff too if you have an auto insurance site. And you can kind of look at what their topic ideas are here. So you, you, they rent, they rank number one for renter's insurance, additional interest. So what is additional interest? They rank number one for it and they're only DR42. So some stuff like that, you can find like interesting topic ideas. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this in Ahrefs, but um, yeah, that's generally the idea. All right. And that kind of covers the keyword research and topic ideas. Hopefully that gave you a few ideas on how to find different article titles and stuff to go after. Now that was a little bit more of a difficult niche than probably a lot of you are going to want to go after. So this next example, when we're looking at subsection headings, 
I'll uh, try to do it with a, a easier niche here. So what I did some searching around, I'm learning how to surf right now. So I just typed in types of surfboards and keyword difficulty is super low. Key, it's four, you could see like the third one down, it's DR6, DR5. So these are pretty easy keywords to start ranking for. And honestly, it's not a bad niche. Like this is a, surfboards are fairly expensive. You could probably get decent affiliate commissions on it and um, decent volume here. So what we're gonna do to find subsection heading is open up the first few different um, articles here. And then you can basically, I mean, it's super simple. You just look through what we're gonna create here and find the different headings that you wanna go after. So maybe we say, let's go to our wordplay, types of surfboards, shapes, sizes, and, and materials, and that can be kind of our article title. Now, let's go ahead and figure out some of these. So boom, actually this was, I didn't even mean to do that, but we could just take this. These are all the different types. And we could just roll with that, but we also might want to look at some of these other ones and see, I mean, honestly, I think that's going to be the best output. Let's go ahead and proceed and submit job. Cool. So it's creating right now. It's going to be ready here in a second. Let's see how it does. And boom, we have an article ready to go. And what you'll probably want to do is put this into WordPress and uh, or whatever CMS you use, do a little fact checking, do a little plagiarism checking just to make sure it's all good to go. And usually what we do is just take two minutes to kind of format it a little bit better. So I'll show you how we format in our example here in a second. Um, but yeah, that's the general idea. If you want to just Google like what topic you're going after, I, I mean, I did it kind of the quick and easy way where I just copied it from one site, but what you'll probably want to do is get ideas from all three of the top three results. And that's how you're going to get the best results on your end in terms of uh, ranking, because you're kind of covering all three topics in one article. So you're looking at what Google's already ranking, right? And taking what they're already ranking and aggregating all three top articles, that's probably the best way you're going to uh, be able to come up with subheadings. So that kind of goes over that. Next, I want to show you a live example from CallScaler. This is another product that we run and how we're using AI content on this website. So let's look at this. This is an industries and use cases page for uh, our software. Our software is a call tracking software. So we created a bunch of different pages to directly talk to a bunch of different industries and use cases. So for example, if we look at YouTube ads, call tracking software for YouTube ads, this isn't a term that gets a lot of search volume, but when people are searching for it, it's a very, very targeted search. So having a page there, um, we're probably going to rank at the top because not many people are creating pages specifically for this use case because the search volume is so low. Um, but it's gonna be super high converting because it's exactly what people are looking for and we address exactly what they need. So uh, to give you an idea of where the AI content comes into play, you'll see here's kind of the content that we got from WordPlay. What we did was take three minutes to basically break out stuff into different paragraphs, add in, like a lot of these lists already come in some of the WordPlay content. You'll, you'll see that whenever you have an account and start creating content, sometimes it generates lists. So um, just putting that into a bulleted list instead of dashes will generally like bold some areas. It, it literally takes like two minutes, but just format it and you know put in inbound links where it makes sense. Um, but yeah, you can kind of have it up and going, just like look over it, make sure the content is like, there's not any like weird things going on with the content and you're generally pretty good. Um, but the way we actually do this, and this is also addressing this number five, interesting ways you can use the content on your site. The way we do this is have all of the AI content at the bottom. And generally what this does, it's not meant to be like really read all that much as um, much as it is like to be read by like the search engine. So the search engine is getting relevant information and like understanding, okay, this whole page is about call tracking software for YouTube ads and having that AI content down there really helps with that. But it's also like, you know, it's generally inform informative content for people who do 
need a little bit more information, but we do put it at the bottom because it's not quite as important as um, listing out some of the features here. And the way we do this with the actual page template is you'll see like a lot of this stuff, it's dynamic content and we just have a template that covers all the same. So like if we go to the roofing companies one, you'll see it's the same general template uh, with content uh, put in between uh, throughout the page and then the AI content here at the bottom. Now, a quick side note, all of these different landing pages and the, the wordplay content that is in them, all of them were created with AI mode on wordplay. So this is the project that we did. You can see all of the different industries and use cases. We haven't published all of them yet. Um, but yeah, all of that was created with just using these as uh, the article title. So you'll see the actual article title is a little bit different than what the page title is on the website. And that's because we wanted to direct the AI. It was kind of what I was saying earlier. We want to leave it more open-ended in terms of what we're writing the content about and what we're feeding the AI. Uh, if we just put call tracking software for roofers, I'm not sure it would give as good of a result as saying, okay, list the benefits of using call tracking for roofers, uh, if that makes sense. But just wanted to interject and let you know on that. And for the next part of this video, I'm going to kind of explain the more technical side of WordPress and how we use this with like templates and Elementor and custom post types. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. Otherwise, you can skip this next part. This is going to be a little more technical. So if you're not as technical with WordPress, maybe this won't make sense. Um, but for the people who are technical, this will be probably pretty helpful. So we have a custom post type, which is use case. And then we also have uh, advanced custom fields here. So we have the use case plural and the use case singular. And you can kind of put that to be whatever you want it to be. And then we have the, the header image. Um, and then if we look at this from Elementor point of view, if you're using Elementor, feel free to skip this too if this is not relevant at all to you. But um, generally, it, it probably works with other editors too, if you, where you create a template and then input different content into the template. So this is this is a post template for our custom post type, which is a use case. So you'll see here um, we actually take in the content from that advanced custom field, and we can put information before and after um, some of this is HTML just because I'm more of a designer, but uh, basically this class does an underlined thing here. And then we put it in towing companies because that's the ACF advanced custom field. And then we do that down here. And then also in the content right here, we just, this is the co post content for the page. And so this is, if we look at, um, let me move this again, display conditions, we're basically choosing the post type use cases that we created and applying this to all use case posts. Um, so yeah, again, very technical type of way to do this. Most people can probably just get away with posting this as a um, blog article. That's what a lot of people will probably end up using this for, but I like to also use it for landing pages. And that's kind of how we do it on our end. So hopefully that makes sense. And that about covers it. I mean, that's overall the best ways to use wordplay. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful and we'll try to put the chapters down at the bottom. That way, if you ever want to rewatch this, you can go exactly to the spot that you're looking for and uh, it'll be covered. All right, thanks for watching and hopefully this was helpful. See ya.